Hey guys, welcome back to Pole Arms. This is Doug, your friendly neighborhood pole, the man of Polish descent that puts the pole in pole arms. Welcome, welcome. Today, we are getting into another product review, specifically the L2D Combat Match Grade Drop-In Barrel for the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm. Okay, and here she is out of the box, the LTD Combat match grade drop-in barrel, replacement barrel for the M&P Shield. Um, uh, I gotta say folks right at the beginning that I am not a fan. Um, I did not like this barrel. Um, I did not like its accuracy um, you know, or its shootability. Um, didn't like it for several different reasons, which I'll get in, get into in just a second. Uh, first, I wanted to tell you why I bought it in the first place. I just recently started shooting IDPA matches, um, which is International Defensive Pistol Association. Uh, the IDPA does not allow for ported barrels. All performance center pistols come with ported barrels. You can see the ports right there. The IDPA does not allow for any compensated barrels, which includes uh, compressors of any kind, micro compressors, or ported barrels uh, for various different reasons uh, I don't even really need to go into. But that's really the whole reason I got into IDPA in the first place was to, um, you know, to, to gain some, some real world scenario based training with my, my carry pistol of choice. Uh, so I was pretty bummed out to find out that I could not use uh, that barrel in competition. Ended up switching over to my uh, Beretta 92G Brigadier. That became my match pistol. Um, but in the back of my mind, I was still looking for um, a possible replacement barrel um, for the ported barrel so that I could, I could use it in matches. Uh, at the time, I really wasn't looking forward to dropping you know, upwards of $200 on a barrel uh, so I held off, but you know, eventually started researching again, and uh, came came upon uh, the L2D barrel. Uh, decided to pull the trigger on it, so to speak, and gave it a shot. Uh, but again, not not happy with it, and, and I'll tell you why. To start right out of the gate, uh, right out of the box, I noticed the the finish was was two tone. Um, I thought based on the pictures online. Um, that the uh, entire barrel was going to be this polished stainless steel. But if you can see the portion of the barrel that is exposed uh, in the uh, ejection port, um, it has more of a satin finish. Um, not, not a deal breaker, but uh, it just n nothing was, was mentioned of having a two-tone finish on any of the websites. Uh, so it was a little bit of a surprise when I took it out of the box. Um, you know, it's an aesthetic thing, a cosmetic thing, not a huge deal, but it, it did kind of throw me when I opened, opened it. Uh, then I went ahead and put it in the, in the slide. Um, and, and, you know, one of the big selling points of, of these things, uh, was the, uh, you know, the fit and finish and just the, the, the super high tolerances, you know, how, how tightly, um, it's supposed to fit in the slide, you know, which, which, uh, which prevents, um, a lot of movement inside of the slide, uh, which only, um, increases, uh, its accuracy. Um, so I was, I was expecting it to be, uh, to be tight, but when I first put it in the slide and I went to uh, release the slide to put it back into battery. I did not use the slide release. I went ahead and manually pushed back the slide, but it didn't return to battery. It ended up jamming. Um, when I pushed it past the point of the, of the catch, uh, it ended up jamming uh, to where I had to physically slap it uh, with the palm of my hand to get it to return to battery. And that happened again another three or four times uh, until finally I can only assume that uh, the finish of wherever it was catching internally, I have no idea where it was catching or how it was catching,
but I can only assume that that finish uh, wore off enough uh, to allow it to um, ret return to uh, return to battery because it, after that fourth time, third or fourth time, it didn't happen again. But right out of the box, you know, first time in the gun, having that happen, pretty discouraging. Okay, so then we go ahead and take it to the range. Um, I put uh, 115 grain as well as 147 grain. 9mm ammunition through it, and I was really disappointed um, with the accuracy. I was really disappointed with the uh, with the recoil. Um, the thing felt like it was kicking like a mule, uh, especially comparing it to how it how it, the gun shoots with the uh, original factory performance center uh, ported barrel. Uh, it was like night and day. And I'm a good shot. Uh, I'm a great shot with this gun with the ported barrel. Um, really accurate with it. Um, the gun shoots very accurately with the ported barrel. Uh, very little muzzle flip. Uh, very little recoil. Um, so comparing the two, like I said, it was like night and day. Um, was not hitting my mark with this gun. Um, I, you know, I, I, I fully understand the, the fundamentals of, of pistol shooting. You know, I have good grip, good trigger control, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I really don't think it was a user error situation. Uh, I, I just think that, uh, you know, this barrel and this gun, uh, just really wasn't, um, really wasn't doing it for me. And a lot of it has to do with expectation level. Uh, you know, just based on how this thing is marketed, uh, you know, with with the with the high tolerances and the and the super you know tight fit and you know the special the special uh, recessed crown at the end of the end of the barrel that aids in um, you know rotation and keeping the the round straight when it leaves the barrel. On down the line, uh, you know, I had pretty high hopes for this thing, high expectations for this thing. Um, expecting it to be, you know, match grade accurate, super accurate. And that just wasn't the reality. Um, it, it wasn't very accurate for me at all. Uh, and, and I also think, so So I think expectation level has a lot to do with it. Um, but, you know, but also I think the reality is that, that um, if there's, I don't know if there's really a need for, uh, a match grade barrel, an expensive match grade barrel. This thing uh, ran me about $170. Uh, there were some uh, some other brands that, that ran uh, closer to $200 and beyond. Um, that's a lot of money for a replacement barrel, um, especially when it's not as accurate as, as it claims to be. Now I know that, that you know any barrel is more accurate than any shooter any given day. I understand that, but as previously mentioned, I'm a pretty good shot uh, with most most platforms, and um, uh, I, I was not uh, very good with with this barrel. Um, so I don't know if if it really needs to be made. I don't know if if L2D or any of its competitors really need to make an expensive match grade barrel for you know a small single stack. Uh, you know, short barrel gun. The shield has, a, I think, a 3.1 inch barrel. Um, you know, I don't know how how much more accurate uh, you're going to make a small single stack short barrel gun um, with with a uh, w with a really expensive match grade barrel. I just don't see um, the benefits. Um, outweighing outweighing the cost. I just don't think there's good value there. Um, so I, I just really don't think uh, this this product category in general really needs to be made. So I would say uh, no to the L2D combat match grade barrel for the shield, but I would also say no, I think, to um, every other barrel from every other company in this category because I really just don't think um, there's any real benefit there. Guys, uh, that's all I have. If, uh, if you enjoyed this video, enjoyed this review and got something out of it, please like it below and uh, definitely check out my channel, Pole Arms. 
subscribe and keep tuning in guys i've got more review videos uh, and, and a lot of other cool stuff planned for the very near future thanks a lot guys for tuning in i'll see you next time